Hi guys, so solo today. Uh, quite impressed actually, uh, considering uh, all the politics with the last Star Wars movie about all the SGWs and the left wing politics to it all and, and rest of it. You know, with the Force, uh, what was it, The Last Jedi? Uh, well, so I went in there with an open mind, like, you know, we're Rogue One, and they've been panning the lead guy, who, the actor, the dude that's playing uh, Anne Solo. I had a friend who were an extra in film, and he told me, you know, he mentioned a few things, like, about it. But he said, all in all, you know, they had a lot of fun making it, so... So... It was in the film somewhere, I don't know, probably in armour or whatever. But it's, uh, I went into the cinema this, this, this afternoon, I watched it, and, you know, I quite enjoyed the film. Uh, I was quite impressed, and I thought that, uh, I don't know the actor's name, the dude that played Dan Sill, I thought he was quite good. You know, now, now the problem is, you've got to realise that with... Uh, and so, look, this is the character was established, what, nearly 30 years ago? 40 years ago, basically. And he's, Harrison Ford is Han Solo. It doesn't matter what you say. I think every generation has, up to now has gone with Harrison Ford. And I've read a lot of the Expanded Universe stuff about Han Solo's origins and all this. And... With the film, I think they went quite into it to a point, to a point. I mean, it, it, it starts off when he's on Corellia and it looks like the planet crows is a complete shithole, right? Even though they build the big ships there and all that, but it's not a nice place to be and he grows up there. It, and he's like, works for some like Fagin type kids thing, you know? Where they take homeless kids in, they get them out robbing and all this. So, it, it sort of goes from that he wants out, he's got aspirations, and there's a woman he loves, this girl, and uh, it's sort of quite interesting. And, and uh, I don't really want to give too many, well, there ain't really, really any spoilers to give out in this film. Because the story's, I mean, the story's not like, I mean, it's not highly vastly deep I mean it goes from one section to the other uh, I mean the characters are great I mean you get so long in on Corellia and then he to get away he joins the Imperial I mean I don't want to go into every aspect of it but then he joins the Imperial military I mean they're just suppressing the galaxy all over the place and it's nice to see that in the Star Wars universe that when you get outside the Emperor and, and rest of it and you get into uh, life in the galaxy and I quite like that about this film about people and, and how it's all corrupt and the Empire and, and they're just awful you know because you don't really get to see a lot of that and in this like with Rogue One you're getting to see some of that oppression uh, it's sort of so he joins like the uh, the Imperials, and and you get that sort of that jumps very quick. It, it really does. You get through that quick, and then he bumps in there uh, into what is it? Woody Harrelson. He bumps into his character in a war zone and all this, and he develops a relationship sort of like not like well, I thought it was going to be like a father figure. In some respects, there is that sort of thing and and then there's an adventure to do a job and when they're robbing the train it reminded me of firefly you know serenity and all that so you got that feel with it and and then it all goes wrong and and then in comes the crimson dawn crime empire and and rest of it and 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 all these other people and characters like moving through and you get to Lando, which now the guy that plays Lando is really good. He, he, you watch the, you know, Billy D. Williams is a legend, but this guy playing the younger version even sounds like him. And he plays the character really well. And it's that's when the film sort of starts picking up for me, is when he meets Lando. Uh, and Chewie as well. It's interesting how he meets Chewie. It's not by how they wrote it. It's a bit, well, he meets Chewie in a sort of different way, which is pretty cool. And I'd, I'd say the film for me starts, goes 
upper level when him and Chewie get together and, and they start learning about each other and they do work very well both the characters great chemistry and and they end up Woody Harrelson which which is all right but he's, I found his character the one I were hoping to be a lot more with him a villain with a bit of honor but, you know I could understand where Han bases some of his own personality from. I mean, there's iconic scenes of certain sayings. I mean, it's a great shot when he walks at the casino, just see his legs and he's got the gun at the side of his leg. Like, Han Solo's in town. Scene of him back at him and Chewie as well. I mean, and there's these one-liners, never trust anybody, and, and all this, and it's interesting. And you come into a bit of the rebellion as well with, with the Marauders. And and the guy that plays the Vision is very good. You know, he's like one of the major players in the Crimson Dawn thing. And 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 and, and it's, it's quite good with uh, Anne Solo's relationship with his partner. Because that doesn't go where you expect it. So the film, it starts veering off in certain directions and and and, and it becomes interesting. You know, and and obviously he gets the Falcon and you know the story behind that. You see that play out, which is really, really good. I mean, I don't know if it's all over the internet now, uh, but, you know, there's a guest appearance of somebody quite iconic from the prequels, which I thought was... I knew about it, but I thought seeing it did make a nice touch. But I'm not going to say who. Uh, but it, it sort of made it where Han Solo could meet this person. You know what I mean? At some point. And uh, his, his partner, uh, the girl he's, the woman's in love with, she takes an interesting path. So it, it's all not hunky-dory with Han Solo. But it, it, it comes together. I mean, the film is very enjoyable. And that's what I liked about this. But I would have liked more about Han's past. I'd like to see more of him in the Imperial Flight Academy. That would have been so... It would have been great, I think, then to focus on the ground war, where he got relegated to. But, yeah, again, he wouldn't have met Chewie, so... But it, it, it would have been nice to have seen that. But the characters in the film are really good. Fandy Newton's at the beginning. She's great. I like when he meets like the renegades, the anti-hero type characters that be the scallywags and the scoundrels, you get really into that. And Star Wars plays them, the, it's like Rebels, the TV says, you get the outsiders, them type of characters, and he comes into them. And, and you know, you really like them sort of people. I think Woody Harrelson was good. I mean, he was all right, but I would have expected a lot more with his character I really wanted more with it but honestly guys it, it's better for me this is better than last jedi it blew that pilot crap out of the water now when i'm going on about sgws and all this uh, i've noticed a lot of people on youtube and uh, they've, they've really gone into poly uh, you know uh left-wing politics and or whatever politics in Star Wars and it's killing it and all this. Look, for me, right, I keep politics myself. I don't get political on this channel. I try not to. You know, there's things in my country, what my government does, it uh, doesn't matter. Opposition parties, damage, whatever, poly you know, but I keep it to myself. I discuss it with my friends, family. That's where I keep it. Now, now, the thing with the Star Wars thing, there's a robot in it and the robot's fighting for the freedom of other robots, you know, and it's quite left-wing, which is cool. You know, it didn't, I didn't have a problem with it, but I've noticed a lot of people have been really having a go about that. I actually loved L7 robot. I thought L7 was brilliant. I really did. And now, now, mate, I'm not associating Star Wars. I don't want to put left and right-wing politics in it, right? Do you know what I mean? I don't care if it's in there or what. I want to go to the cinema and see more of the Star Wars universe. 
And you got to see a part of that universe with this film, People's Lives, What's It Like Under Imperial Rule. It's quite interesting, do you know what I mean? And and, and comes out with some interesting points because he has a conscience and I like that about his character, even though he tries to deny it. I mean, there's there's a great scene with an Imperial officer where Han says, well, what? He said, no wonder they're fighting. We, we invaded him. And, and and this officer said, oh, no, we're here to restore order and we're doing it for the Emperor. And I, I mean, he's just a robot and he gets kicked out of the unit. And, and it, it's interesting. He does, he knows right and wrong. And he walks that middle line with it. You know what I mean? But the politics, I couldn't care less. I mean, I mean, the thing is, I mean, there is, I mean, you've got a suppressive force has took over the galaxy, run by an evil of the Emperor. But then again, you can question the core worlds are in to be another Imperial rule. And like the Emperor said, you know, about the Sith and the Jedi. But the Emperor is a monster. I mean, he is evil. But that's my opinion. I mean, other people might disagree. I mean, it's a debate for another time in a movie, you know, about two forces and Jedi and Sif and, and that. You don't really touch on any of this in this film. And which I quite liked about it, you know. So, that, it, it, I don't, but I mean, like, you've got, you've got a right-wing authority taking over the galaxy. I mean, the Emperor played it beautifully, did in, in the old story of it all. And these are all the events going on since that time, which is great. But it's good. it's been going back thousands of years with the Sith and the Jedi. And and the Sith won. And and obviously it all falls again when Vader throws him down the shaft. But so but if, if a group's gonna suppress another group, that group's gonna stand up to the other group. And that's what Star Wars is in it. You know, I mean you've got a uh, a, a military power took over everything, forcing the will on people. People don't want it. They just want to get on with their lives. And like with Han Solo, he wants to go his own way. He don't want all this. And you can sort of get that with him, why he's like he is. And, you know, the whole film, so it, it, you get out of that. It's hard to, I mean, how can I explain it? with the politics, say I've touched the politics of Star Wars, and I'm dropping it. But that's my view. But I like Han Solo, and you've got these rogues, they're not playing by whatever side, rebels, uh, empire, whatever. These people are not playing by their rules. They're out to survive. And it reminds me of Serenity, you know, on Firefly. He wants to go his own way. And that's what these people do, they'll do whatever but some of them have a conscience and i like that and i like this family thing when they create these relationships and i think this film touches on that in certain parts so it's not bad it, it, honestly i preferred this to last jedi like i said before so i do recommend solo uh, the one down point i will say about this and I, I shot in 3d today because i couldn't get it for 2d one and uh, I found that the film were quite dark. You know, they want a lot of colour. It was quite a dark picture. And I found that a bit annoying. I thought there must have been scenes, you know, like Rogue One were really colourful. But I found that this were quite dark. I mean, they needed to, like, adjust the picture and turn, turn it up. You know, and it lacks a lot of that. It's quite a dark film with the, you know, the visuals and that. Even the whole more thing when they were in the mall, quite dark. I thought they'd be more colour, more spectacular. Yeah, but that's my only downfall. But all in all, a good film. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to give it, out of 10, I'm going to give it an 8. Last Jedi, I'm not even going to go there. So that's my review of Star Wars The Solo Story. Right, guys, please give this video a like. I always say this. Please subscribe and please share and let me know your thoughts and uh, I'll see you on the next video. You know, I don't know what's next. I think I've seen everything this year now. All right, guys, speak soon.